are live. We are live. We are live. All right. All right. All right. No, don't do that. All right, all right. All right. All right. <laughs> get sued and shit. Like and somehow it'll get back to him. Uh, I do anyways, it just good enough to get the copyright strike. You know, like, like they're playing that clip. We're not. It's just We're a redneck from Florida. Yep. Brown neck. Basically Brown a neck. coconut. Because I'm Pacific Islander. Brown on the outside, white on the inside. That's and it's coconut. your month. Or it was your month last it month. It was my month. Yeah. Now it's now it's my daughter's month. Oh, right, right, yeah. I remember you told me about that. Yeah. Anyways, so it is uh, it is the Friday Educational Show. We really had no idea what to put together because, honestly, we had a lot of subjects we wanted to go over and wanted to discuss in detail. Uh, and we just kind of ended up muddying everything so it yeah, was so we're going to talk about all of them, but with almost no detail. Hey, Ash. Welcome to the show, Ashley. Woo. One of the things I really, really, really wanted to talk about was voice acting and how getting into voice acting and it's it's uh, this. What does this button do? I'm not sure. What, what button did you press? I oh. clicked on the star. So that marks it at the top, so that way we can always, uh, we can, when we look at the chat, it'll be marked at the top, oh, okay. so we can talk about it later. Cool. So no, I, I wanted to talk about voice acting and how a lot of people find it so difficult to voice <clears> act. And how to, I was uh, I was listening to a couple of podcasts about, about it, and you know, uh, one of these guys was just like, yeah, it's just so difficult. Like, I have to, I have, to have the director there, because if I don't have the director there, I don't know what I'm doing. And I was... I don't know, maybe maybe because I'm old school or I've been in the industry for a while, I was just looking at him like Can't relate, bro. <laughs> yeah, I can't. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, honestly, the people that are like, I gotta have the director. I kind of think like you probably didn't read a lot of books as a kid. Yeah. You know what you I mean? Because you know? like when I read all those goosebumps books, you know, between ages like seven and twelve, each character had their own voice. Yeah. In my mind. In your head, and the way <laughs> you they see things, yeah. and the way they perform, yeah, like I'm the same way. Like one of my favorite books uh, as a kid was Jeremy Thatcher Dragon Hatcher. Uh, it's just, just this weird just book, and uh, it, it had it had descriptions of voices, like the, the dragon would talk to him, right? And the mm -hmm. dragon had a very wispy voice, and it had a very deep and wispy voice, and it was a female. So I always imagined something like Sir Gorney Weaver. You know what I mean? Like a deeper, a deeper feminine voice that is still kind of airy and out there. And then every once in a while, the dragon just goes, "I'm Sigourney Weaver." <laughs> and you are watching the Discovery Channel. What? I'm uh, also figuring out what all these faders do on my fucking. Uh, what? My wavelength. I'm figuring out what all the different oh. faders do. Oh, that's how I can turn this up, but not get my. Sh Fucking eardrums shattered whenever you play videos. Hey, I figured it out. Oh, there you go, Bubba. So, anyways, <laughs> I've uh, only I'll, had I this could... since December. <laughs> Learn something new every day. <clears throat> so, I, I kind of wanted to talk about the idea of you know, like just getting into getting as a voice actor. Like I've been doing this for such, for a long, long time. And granted, I, I've had I've had a couple of professional credits under my belt. You know, uh, I've had more than more than a few uncredited stuff to, under my belt, but. Uh, just the idea of voice acting in its in and of itself, like we've dragged a whole bunch of folks into dark charm media with us. Like I dragged you in, I dragged DJ in, I dragged in <laughs> Paul, Mark, and Josh. You know what I mean? Like, right? Uh, I'm, I'm dragging everybody in. I, I wanted to drag in Ashley. I'm, she's still on the fence about it. I dragged in a friend, Rachel, uh, and so uh, I kind of. Uh, I love voice acting, and I think it's such a passionate thing, and it it can be really fun, and it can be really frustrating at the same time. You know yeah. what I mean? Hey, somebody posted pie. <laughs> cool. What are you doing, dead man? That's not me. All right. Uh, but uh, I think I think uh, I, I think uh, uh, I think it's really fun when you can actually take off with a character like run with the character and and uh, have something to experience pond far hi welcome to the show i like pie i love pie man pumpkin pie whatever fuck, fuck apple pie though Ugh. 
Apple pie is not bad. What kind of heathen cooks an apple? It's already a soft fruit as it is. I mean, some some apples are really difficult. I don't like cooked apples. Uh, I could bake the hell out of an apple pie, though. I just won't fucking eat it. <laughs> well, <laughs> I, mean, I like apple pies. All uh, right, cool. but like, so what? What? What was uh, you said? One of your forays, one of the things that made you want to be a voice actor, uh, was um, Kung Pao Enter the Fist. Kung Pao Enter the Fist, and how he just <laughs> got all these voices, and I was trying, and I was trying to yeah. like narrow it down, and I was like, what role was it? But I was like, no, no, you know, it's all the roles. Hair pie? Why not? Uh, yeah, dude. Like, especially that part of the middle of the movie, you know, where it's like um, the intermission and he's all like, I've chosen the large tub. <laughs> My nipples look like milk duds. I hope they have slushies. And it's literally I've all got the some same yellow guy. liquid for your popcorn and it's non-dairy. Like, it's all Steve Odenkirk. Like, yeah, it's all Steve Odenkirk, yeah. <laughs> And so and, it's uh, fun, <laughs> <laughs> and you know, and he's able to, and he's able to make the voices work. Like that's the worst part. Even with yeah. like, with like mm, Betty, <laughs> I'm evil, Betty. I'm evil, and I work for the council. <laughs> like just, yeah, this, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like, <laughs> like the stupid accent, the accent that he came up with. You know what I mean? Like right. <laughs> From now on, Master Payne is referred to as Betty. <laughs> Do as he says, or he'll cut off your big toe. Yeah, <laughs> like and then like uh, even like Steve Odenkirk, like like uh, uh, like inserting his own voice in there yeah. as like the one or whatever the chosen the, the one, chosen yeah. one. You know what I mean? <laughs> Isn't Betty a girl's name? <laughs> you know, it, 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 it's it was so at bad. that moment that the chosen one learned a valuable lesson about iron claws. They hurt like crap, man. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna watch that movie after the show, dude. Like, ugh. But I that's think... gonna be like my trial too. Like, if if I meet a chick, um, one of the first things we're gonna do is watch Kung Pao Enter the Fist. Right. And if she doesn't like even giggle at least once, that's not the one. <laughs> that's not I, the uh, one. <laughs> I, 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 I... I can't, I can't argue with that. I mean, like Kung Pao is like quintessential to like how stupid our fucking humor is. Exactly. Like that you, and then, your, yours, your humor and my humor, like we share it so much. It's oh, so dude. weird. Yeah. If we could actually write down like half the shit we talk about, dude. We'd probably would be, be arrested in like four countries. No, that's the half we're not going to write down. Oh. I mean, the funny shit that we talk about. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But uh, the hell is that? Oh, it's Amelia. You got the kill? Yeah. Oh, Amelia, I got the kill. Good job, Kit Kat. So for, for those of you who aren't on our Patreon and who uh, aren't familiar with What's Amelia's uh, battle cries, uh, she has a tiny red bird that she, uh, yeah. she I guess once or twice a day, she, uh, she, she hunts it. She hunts it down and then <laughs> murders it and then carries it around the house screaming for a grave robber to congratulate her and yep. <laughs> I think it's one of the funniest things in the world. <laughs> you want to say hi? But uh I I think uh I think voice acting has always been a cool thing for me because I I think my 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 inspiration hi. Oh, Amelia. Really? She's like, this fucking thing smells like your vape dad. That's a lot of deep thoughts. Re wow. Hmm. <laughs> and what else? Okay, well, we don't go political on the show. Yeah, sorry, Amelia. Your, yeah. your time's up. Uh, <laughs> but I, I think uh, voice acting has always been kind of a thing for me. Uh, hey, Mike fucking Smith is here. Uh, and uh, I... <laughs> Really, really just delving into a whole bunch. Like, Michael Winslow from Police Academy was probably yeah. my inspiration. I like cashew chicken. My wife has more into general, too. Kung Pao is good, too. I like all three, <laughs> but I'm a fat ass, so. I pretty much like anything that's not vegetables. Yeah, pretty much. Like, I like uh, the broccoli and chicken, but I always pick out the broccoli because when they, like, cook together, oh, it's so good. And then I just don't eat the broccoli. Oh, God. 
General Sao. It's Sao, T-S-A-O. That's what you're trying to do, do Bonfire. Uh, but uh, the Michael, Wins- Michael Winslow, <laughs> way back in Police Academy, you know what I mean? Like like doing the stupid you know, sound effects and the, the way he would like make his voice like really funny to fuck with the other actors. Yeah. Like like even on purpose, he would fuck with him on purpose. You know what I mean? Like like the, the whole helicopter bit where he's going up the stairs. Like that was that was improvised by him just to fuck with the the guy uh the guy that was playing the main character. When he's playing the video game that's not even plugged in. Yeah, yeah. He's playing <laughs> like... literally an imaginary video game. But like the the, the, the captain walks by and he's like <laughs> Asshole. Gotta <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> spit on my mic a little bit. <laughs> Michael Winslow was incredible. Yes, yes, he still is. He still he still does tours. He's he's uh, kind of subsided into a a stand up comedian, and uh, I think uh, it's one of the funniest. But but I think that was like one of probably the first time I was like I want to do cool stuff with my voice. You know yeah. what I mean. Well, yeah, and then after, like, watching, like, Kung Pao and stuff, because I was a young teenager, right. and I worked at Blockbuster. Um, after watching Kung Pao, though, uh, we had a, I think it was a VHS of Batman the Animated Series. It was, like, three episodes. And that's when I found out that Mark Hamill was the Joker. I'm like, no way, Luke Skywalker is the freaking Joker? And that's really yeah. what cemented, like... Voice acting can be amazing. And then finding out the voice of Winnie the Pooh is like a hundred other things in the Disney world. Freaking Jim Cummings. Like, he's everywhere. Oh, my God. I was three or four years old when I saw Police Academy. Nice. Wow. I mean, I would say that it doesn't seem like the movie a four-year-old should watch, but I was watching, like, Hellraiser and Phantasm and shit at, like, five. So (laughs) we just got into different stuff. I mean, like I, I've, I've, I remember watching, uh, I remember watching Freddy Krueger. You know what I mean? Nightmare on Elm Street. Yeah. When I was, uh, when I was five or six years old, and the the scene where all the blood pools and then it goes straight down, that was one of the scariest goddamn things in the world to me, and it <laughs> fucked me up for years, and it took me a couple of years to come back to the movie to to watch it, and then finally, when I was much, much older, and I had seen much, much worse. I went, you know, I went back to the Nightmare on Elm Street, and I was kind of like, "It's not so bad. It's really it's campy. Kind of blasé, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's kind of blasé. Like, I, it, it's weird, right? But like, what progresses, it scares us, right? Because right. like, when when you when you hear like, oh God, I remember reading articles about how Darth Vader's voice scared people into having literal anxiety attacks and panic yeah. attacks in the theater. You or like I mean? the uh, the theme for unsolved mysteries gave children nightmares. Yeah, yeah, like. but like the just just this idea, right? So like like it's it's weird because like they the the Darth Vader, fucking <laughs> what about the Simpsons? This is an amazing group. Uh, I kind of like the Simpsons I when I was Simpsons. in like elementary and middle school. And yeah, like they, 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 that's another group that one guy plays like eight characters. That is true. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That is like, that is a huge troop. Yeah. Uh, but like from going from like going, like what, what I'm trying to say is like, what, what scares us, right? Darth Vader. You do mm-hmm. not know the power of the dark side. Right. And then that gave people fucking panic attacks. But then you fast forward a few years and it's Freddy. Freddy's voice gave people nightmares. Go ahead. I know you know how to do it. Don't fucking lie. Welcome to my world, bitch. Yeah. Like it's it's so hollow, you know? Like Yeah, it just weird. sounds like a really thirsty meth head. <laughs> Honestly. <laughs> yeah, it does. You got so. a dollar? I'm trying yeah. to buy taquitos. <laughs> I want to get me a tornado. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I'll mail it back, I swear. You like, know, uh, and you know, and then you have the same Freddy. Well, he would he, do that creepy, like growl sound every once in a while. Yeah, I can't really mimic that one. But yeah, it was just like so resonant and like yeah, demonic, yeah. which was beautiful. Honestly, I think uh, and, and, and hearing Jackie Earl Haley's take on Freddy, I liked, I it. liked it. I liked the way I like how deep he dropped it. Yeah, for all the haters out there, okay, coming from an, a, a Nightmare on Elm Street fan, 
I liked the remake. I liked how they went into the story and were like, you know what? We're all grown ups. He was a child molester. We're not going to hide it. <laughs> We're like, done pussyfooting. We're done pussyfooting with yeah. footing of the fucking idea. Uh, being scared of Darth Vader is undercover racism. I will listen to James Earl Jones ne- read a phone book. Facts. I mean, that's no, that that's perfectly fine. If he was reading a phone book, that's perfectly fine. If, but if you walk into your room in the middle of the night and just hear his voice in a threatening manner, that's that's a whole another version of upset. You know, yeah, what I mean? like, if you're like laying in your bed halfway between sleep and awake, and you hear that. You left your window open. Ha! Shit! <laughs> <laughs> that that's 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 kicking off the blankets, panicking. You know what I mean? Yeah, but like, then again, we talked about that too. Yeah, Freaking yeah. Schwarzenegger, you're laying in your bed, minding your own business, playing on your phone, and you forgot to fold your clothes. F- fuck. <laughs> you're in the closet, aren't you? How did you find me? You are a nine foot tall Austrian robot. You can't hide. <laughs> Just, yeah, and again, <laughs> that voice, when it's applied to the silly nature of it, is funny. But you go back all the way back to Terminator, and people found it terrifying. Yeah. People Fuck you, found it, asshole. Fuck you, asshole. Like, I, 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 like it's, such a, it's such a subdued accent when he's back then because he's, he's fighting the American in it. So it's, yeah. it's, really, it's really awkward to hear that, Aust- that heavy hunger- Hungarian Austrian dialect. But, you know, like, it's... Are you Sarah Connor? Right. 45 yes. Colt. 45 Colt with the long slide and the laser. You know, yeah. it's like. Uzi 9mm. Uzi 9mm, 40 watt. What was it? 40 watt phase. No. Yeah, anything else you want? Uh, phase plasma rifle, 40 watt go. range. 40 watt hey, range. But only what you see. <laughs> I'm only scared if I hear a noise and see a red lightsaber. I mean, dude, that's just it. Like, if 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 Darth Vader's in your room, you have done something. <laughs> I mean, honestly, at that point, yeah, it's it's over. It's done. over. I mean, I'm, I'm gonna box him. I mean, just so you know, him. just so you know, this whole room's gonna smell like shit and piss. <laughs> it's not <laughs> going out peacefully. I mean, so it, it's, it's but like getting back to like Jackie Earl Haley and the way he played it. You know, like he played it more of my range of 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 a voice. Yeah, you know I, mean? I like, liked his too. What are you screaming for? I ain't even cut you yet. Yeah, and then when they added like the reverb and stuff in yeah. post, it just added to that whole like creepy immersion. Because he because he, he sounded creepy. He yeah. sounded creepy. He didn't sound like a method. He sounded like a chomo. You know what yeah. I mean? Wake yeah. up! You're bleeding. It, uh, yeah. And that's like, you want some candy? No. No. <laughs> no, I don't. Um, Diabetic. <laughs> like, hard candy, or you got like Twix? <laughs> Great, Robert. I, haven't, I haven't had a Twix in a long time. <laughs> Maybe he's Reese's recruiting. Cups. I mean, if I mean, if you're lucky, I mean, like that's the best case scenario. You wake up with Darth Vader in your room. Join the dark side. Yep. Oh God. <clears throat> if I survive this fucking heart attack, cool. <laughs> Jesus fuck. <laughs> so, do I have time to? Oh, sorry, you kind of woke me up. Do I have time to get my socks out of the dryer, or does the Empire provide those? Because <laughs> I'm kind of particular to my socks. <laughs> and They uh, have it, arch support. <laughs> <laughs> Just with the little copper things in them. Yeah. But... <laughs> But it's it's really cool to relate like horror, right, to to voices and what scares us, because like so many vo- voices are are what's what's what scares people. I mean, because then you you move forward a little bit. Let's move. Let's jump forward a little bit in time. The Lost Boys. Mm. You have my, even Michael's like disheveled Oily sax guy. <laughs> I know it's the wrong fucking song, but it's all I've I can think of. Honestly, only watched The Lost Boys one time. Okay, but you still remember the voices. You still remember Michael. Yes, I remember a little. I remember bits Let and pieces go, of them. Michael. I yeah. those maggots. The voices were good, maggots. but I definitely remember oily saxophone. You do? Who doesn't? Or I mean, who doesn't? Sorry, that guy Batman's haunts favorite, people. Bendy sex whistle. <laughs> <laughs> That's the fucking best. <laughs> Bendy sex whistle. 
there was the trumpet one that I fucking cried. I was crying. It was like it was like twisty scream whistle or some shit like that. Oh, I think I'm. Was yeah. that the one that I made? I don't was know, it, but I was. I think crying. it was like cursive scream flute or something like that. <laughs> that one, I don't know. I was crying though. I was like literally. Oh, uh, I was in fucking tears, like an <laughs> idiot, dude. Yeah, I was um, just renaming instruments. Yep, cursive scream flute. <laughs> dude, that's so good. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot where the fuck I was. Okay. Um, oh, Lost Boys. Lost Boys, yes. So, you have Michael's disheveled and, like, tired, exhausted voice when he's a vampire. Yeah. Because he's he's kind of, like, prepubescent almost with it. Get him away from me. Don't let him see me like this. You know what I mean? He's, yeah, you can like sense that he's going through the change. He's almost. yeah, he's changing. You know what I mean? So there's a lot of it. It's very prepubescent. Oh, if I ever met Tobin is, Bell, I'm crying, running, and peeing myself, Jigsaw. That dude, is a yeah. good question right here. Yeah, Jigsaw. You want to play a game? You took your life for granted, and now you must make a choice: choose, live, or die. Yes, I can do all the scary voices in the world, I know. Does the voice make the character or the character make the voice, says Mike Smith, like Nick Cage does Vader, Vader does Nick Cage. I mean, that's a that's that's on our that's on our OnlyFans, like that fanfic, but yeah. the thing is, is that a character can be made or broken by a voice, and this is the God honest truth. It can be made or broken by a voice. We'll actually use Nick Cage in this example, Caster Troy. Oh. When Caster Troy was Nick Cage, oh, he was so good because he was so over the top. Everything about him was coked up. And yeah. then on the other spectrum of it, you have, uh, what's his name? John Travolta. John Travolta. Thank you. I was going to say fucking <laughs> I Saturday couldn't think Night of Fever. the character name, though. But, uh, yeah. Archer. Yeah. Uh, John Archer. So you have Caster Troy Crazy. and John Archer. Oh, different <laughs> archer. Yeah, different archer. <laughs> so you have Caster Troy and John Archer. When uh when when he's John Archer and uh I'll join the dark side before I play a game. Bro, same. 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 Yeah. Uh when John Archer is being played by uh John Travolta. John Travolta. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. He has this really melancholy tone to his voice. In fact, it's so prominent. It actually makes up a huge part of the scene where they come back after casting, uh, after catching Caster Troy. And, you know, everybody's celebrating, and he picks up the bottle, and he goes, Hey, how about to Ramirez, to Pinkerton, yeah. to Johnny, to all the people who aren't going to make it home? How about that? And he slams the fucking bottle down and he walks away. But John Travolta, has, has in his voice, in that melancholy tone, even going home to his wife where he's he's sighing and he has her feet in his hand. He's like, ah, date night, date night, right, right, I'm so sorry. And it's so melancholy and so dark. And that's what made John Archer. But at the same time, Sean Archer. Sean Archer, it's Sean Archer, my bad. Uh, but at the same time, Caster Troy as uh, as Nick Cage, everything is just on cocaine. Everything's turned up to ten. Hey, you watch your fucking mouth! <laughs> All right, I'm ready I for the big time, to... baby. Come on! Like it's yeah. so coked out, but it's supposed to be the same character, and then you switch the bodies. That's the best part about the movie. Because, scientifically speaking <laughs> like oh my god dude like for real okay because you have john travolta pretending to be nicholas cage pretending to be john travolta yeah and then you have nicholas cage pretending to be john travolta pretending to be nicholas cage like it's freaking crazy because they, they that's how, they're such good actors how to talk like yeah, they Nick. are such good actors. Like Nicolas Cage actually like glides around like John Travolta does, you know? Yeah. And, like John Travolta actually has the weird breaks in his speech, like Nicolas Cage, but yeah. in John Travolta's voice. Like it's such a Wait, fun you good looking. 
fun fucking movie to watch. Yeah, but the <laughs> like, thing is, is that those voices, like I was saying, those voices do alter the characters. Yeah. And it takes it takes such a minute. It takes <laughs> such a minute for them to 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 jive with what's going on. And oh I don't know God. if it was shot. Is that another Saturday Night Fever joke? Because we got Pon Far John Travolta was trying to stay alive, and you like uh, to jive with what's going. On. Oh my God! No, I didn't mean to say that. I didn't mean to make a pun. Uh, but John Travolta, it, it, it's it's taking a minute, right? I don't know if they shot it in continuity, but it's taking a minute. Like yeah. when you when you first see John Travolta as Caster Troy, when you first see uh, Nick Cage as, as Sean Archer, it's awkward as fuck because there's I don't know if they shot it or they hadn't spent much time together, but they're re it's really awkward and they're really kind of chewing through their line not chewing they're stumbling through their lines and through their accents and what they're supposed to sound like, yeah. so it's really awkward but it really does come into a fold about two thirds into the movie when john Tra when uh when nick cage as as sean archer goes to see his wife the dentist and that's when you can start to see like they've adapted their their, their voices to yeah. the, the mannerisms and everything and see when when uh what i i i like to think about it that it was on purpose the, because the stumbling when, through? Yeah, when they had first switched, they were trying to figure out how to act like the other person. Mm. That's how I feel like it was. You I, know? I, would, I would like to say that, but the, the first interaction between them is what, <clears throat> the, what, what was probably the most awkward scene. Yeah. That, you know, like when, when Sean, when, when Castor as Sean is holding the, the paper and he's like, Ooh, Yeah, in that, that magnet prison you or whatever. Good it is. looking. Yeah. You're hot. And it's like, ah, uh, no, that's swing and miss, swing and miss, <laughs> swing and miss. Yeah. But yes, like, does the character make the voice of the, the voice make the character? The thing is, is that I truly believe that without a good voice, you're going to have a shit character. And especially without having a, 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 a voice or an actor that can deliver the lines. Like, that is so fucking important. Like you, like the guy could be the best actor in the world, but if his voice somehow falters or he doesn't deliver the lines, it it, it just doesn't get there. For instance, perfect example: Matt Smith as uh, the Doctor, the Eleventh Doctor in the show Doctor Who. Wonderful actor, G great, holy shit. This guy, this guy was amazing. He had a wide range of emotion. The only thing he could not do was he could not get the drop. And the drop is, is, is when, when, we're, when you're referring to acting or you're referring to, to voice acting, is it's a switch up. It's a switch up from one emotion to another or one status to another. The one, uh, David Tennant, the guy that came before him, had the drop perfect. My favorite doctor. Our, our favorite doctor. <laughs> but the thing was, was that he had to drop perfect. He could literally go from, ah, well, you know, to I am the doctor. Mm -hmm. And in basically one word, run. Run. And then you were fucked. You were fucked. You knew you were fucked. But then you go to you, then you go to Matt Smith, who was just as brilliant, just as wonderful. But he had, he couldn't get the drop. He couldn't get that that just threatening tone. It never worked for him as Matt, as the Doctor. Uh, Rory walks into the to the to the Dalek graveyard, and he's holding Pond, and he goes, "Well, who killed all these Daleks?" And Matt Smith looks at him and goes, "Well, who do you think?" And it just it doesn't work. It's like God, almost there. Fuck. <laughs> See, I think Pond Fire understood what I was trying to say about Face Off, though. Uh, maybe they were changing and developing into this new person to match the face. It was more than plastic surgery. Yeah, like when it's awkward when they first meet in the prison, yeah. right? I was trying to say, like, they did it all on purpose because they were doing what they thought that person was like. And then as the movie progressed, they quit trying to pretend to be the other person because they realized looking like that person was all you needed. Yeah, I mean, no, no, I, and, and I totally understand that. I totally get it. I and I'm I'm looking at this from a, uh, I'm looking at this from a different point of view. 
Yeah. It's just, you know, the, the voice acting and the acting point of view. I'll, however, you guys have wonderful points. You really do. And more than likely, that's exactly what they were going for. I'm just reading too much into it. You know, where's Buck's body? <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, that's that's a new piece of merch we're going to have coming out. Where's Buck's body? And I just dis- and I and I've decided to make our sticker that just went out. You guys should have your stickers by now. If not, uh, it sh- give it till Monday. And uh, I decided to make that a T-shirt design. Yeah, kind of like how in the movie Face Off too. Speaking of where's Buck's body? Yeah. Um, John Travolta is two inches taller than Nicolas Cage, right? I don't but know. they were like, well, what about the height difference? It's like, oh, people won't notice that as long as you, you can act like you're the right person. I don't know how tall. I don't know how tall. I, I know Nick Cage is like 6'1". Nick Cage is 6'0". John Travolta is James Earl Jones. John Travolta is 6'2"? Yeah. Wow. I didn't know that. Yeah, that's a big dude. Wow. <laughs> I was unaware. Yeah. No, well, how fucking tall is too. Hugh? How fucking tall is Hugh Jackman then? Because he makes Hugh John Travolta like look six four, isn't he? He looks makes him look small in Password Swordfish. Now I'm curious. Six but three. What the fuck? It's so weird. He makes him look really small. I don't know. I Maybe don't, Hugh don't Jackman think... was accidentally wearing Tom Cruise shoes. I don't know. What the? F- what? I don't. Hold on. <laughs> I I I gotta look this up. Hold Dead on. Dead man sitting out there watching airplanes. I'm gonna hurt you. No, you're not. <laughs> not yet, at least. <laughs> what the fuck? No. Huh? That is weird. That is just weird. There's no way he's that big because he looks so small next to so many other people on camera. John Travolta. No, but at the same time, he looks really huge in From Paris with Love. Yeah, he does. He looks like a he looks like a golem. He looks like yeah, a guy my with, size. Like his shaved head and everything. Yeah. Yeah. He's kind of scary looking in that movie. I love that movie though. I really love that fucking movie. And that's a but you know, getting back to does does the character make the make the, the voice or the voice make the character? I, I can like also uh, hmm? I feel like it has to be perfectly balanced. Mm. I mm. Because, like, let's say, for example, the imagery of Darth Vader, right? Yeah. It's still enough to instill terror in some. Yeah. But if Darth Vader in the famous scene was all like, uh, Obi-Wan ain't never told you about your father. (laughs) You know? He told me enough. He told me you killed him. No. I'm your daddy. It wouldn't work. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> like <laughs> I'm your daddy. <laughs> but oh then again, God. if 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 it was, you know, the fucking Darth Vader voice, right? Obi Wan never told you about your father. Obi Wan never told you about your father. But Darth Vader's character was like Six Mark Hamill's size and scrawny. It wouldn't yeah. do the same either. I mean, okay, so like with like Darth, it has to be balanced. With Darth, well, okay, I'll give you, I'll give you a, a, a counterpoint to that. Okay. Negan. Negan was way skinnier than I thought he should be. Yeah, we'll get to that in a second. Hold on. Face off if you like going both ways. I mean, who doesn't? Password Swordfish is one of my favorite movies. Holly, Halle Berry is a goddess. Yes, and yes. she is. She runs around scantily clad for a lot of it. And actually, and actually, to make her feel better, here's a, here's a fun movie fact. I will to make her feel Halle better. Halle Berry's afternoon reading any day. <laughs> to, to, to make her feel better, both Hugh Jackman and... And John Travolta took her out and uh, to a strip club, and they're the ones that stripped down naked, almost buck ass naked for her. And they Aww, did it again. <laughs> they did it again, actually during an award show. Uh, they, the, during the, during an award show, I think it was the MTV Music Awards, where they actually lifted their shirts and were dancing and grinding for Halle Berry <laughs> because she got, she went topless for the movie, and uh, that's just a really weird, sweet behind the the, the, the scenes thing. However, Negan is physically not that imposing 
No. I no. could fight his ass. Yeah, you look at him and you're like, stop. <laughs> you fucking mic stand. <laughs> like, there's not much there. Well, you know? Listen, bitch, I've never punched a bean pole before. <laughs> I'm, up, I'm fixing to start. <laughs> but that voice and the way he talks and the command that he talks with, it's a lot. And it is overbearing for somebody that's under that's under that weight. Yeah. No, I like Negan's voice. Yeah. You know, yeah, he's got that like mischievous Rick, right? raspiness to it. You know, I'm Negan. Now I understand that you thought you ran shit, but shit is over. The new world order is here. And it's really quite fucking simple. So pay attention, because in case you're fucking stupid, which you very might well be, here's the gist of it. I want half your shit. But it's that voice and the way he delivers it that makes it work. Because, you, like I said, Beanpole. You yeah. Fucking Norman Reedus has more muscle on him than fucking yeah. Negan does. <laughs> fucking Carl is fucking jacked compared yeah. to Negan. But like, it's at least Carl's voice. been eating. Yeah, well, a whole can of pudding. Uh, well, you know, I mean, that's a great way to put on weight. Yeah. <laughs> but it's that Did voice. Jar -Jar it's that voice, and it's that command that he has. You know what I mean? Yeah. This is it. I will shut that shit down. No exceptions. And it's so violent and over the top that you're looking at this beanpole with a baseball bat wrapped with barbed wire, and you're like... Outside of any other context, you're like, how is this guy a threat? The bat weighs as much as he does. Th <laughs> throw a half full <laughs> bottle of water at him. Let's fucking be done with this. <laughs> but with that command, with that voice, with that cadence even, that broken cadence that makes you pay attention because you never know when he's going to curse. Yeah, You know what I mean? Like, like the dirty versions of stuff that you've seen. Like you never know when he's going to curse, so it breaks up in your ears so weird. So, like, with, with the voice, does the voice make the character? I believe it absolutely can make the character. And I, and I say that with a lot of confidence. It can make the character. Ah, Friends, another good example. The go deleted ahead. scene from Rise of the Machines. Yes. Ha! I'm Colonel such and such. You know, it's like, I don't know about that voice. We can fix it. We can <laughs> fix it. <laughs> the little guy with the glasses. <laughs> Tiny German dude. <laughs> Hi, yeah. Colonel. I'm Colonel Hayes. Yeah. Yeah. You know, We're here like, to introduce you to our new fighting force. Nah, I don't know about the voice. Yeah. We can fix it. Yeah. Like, that's another good example. Yeah. So, like, <laughs> hold on, hold on. The image got stuck in my head for a split fucking second. Um, <laughs> this southern friendly Arnold Schwarzenegger. On yes, the that kind of fucks me up, dude. I. <laughs> God, I wish we could play that without getting copyright. <laughs> I, 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 we, we, we might. It's such a short thing. We might be able to get away with it. I'll try to find it. That way, you don't uh, have to look at airplanes. Oh, shut the fuck up! Uh, <laughs> I would strip for Hallie. The, what's the big deal? I mean, uh, no, it was. It wouldn't. It's. It's right. the idea of at the time, women were still expected to go topless in movies, with little to no recompense or you know consideration and hugh jackman and uh john travolta felt that she was such a good sport about it that they uh they they, they did it just to make her feel better attitude people it's about the unvoiced it's about what you can project and make people believe and and a lot of that has to do with the way an actor delivers a line which is why i say a voice can absolutely make a character like absolutely and like like just look at look at like when genie was replaced in any of the subsequent aladdin movies when it wasn't played by robin williams it was garbage yeah no for sure or the the tv series oh god the tv series was terrible oh no however another really good uh what is this all oh, now Okay. That's the uh, Sergeant Candy scene. Chat. Yeah, Mike. We got we got feed from both. Um, we got feed from both Facebook and YouTube. 
So if we're if we're talking to folks, yeah, that you don't see, you're not going crazy. <laughs> or are you? What if Darth Vader was voiced by Morgan Freeman? Oh no. Obi Wan never told you about your father. Oh, he, used to, he told oh. me enough. He told me you killed him. Nope. I'm your father. I'm your pappy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just a sad clown feeling down. So here we go. You said it starts around around the one minute mark. Yeah. This mark. So this is this is exactly what we mean when a voice can make or break a character. No audio. No audio. No audio. Mike Pond, do you guys have audio? Man, I don't want to keep that up on the screen any longer than I have to. Yeah, no, it's it's audio. I got nothing on my end. Okay, they have audio. <laughs> there you go. Which is weird because playing it back, uh, there's no audio on on the stream yeah, no, either. Why? What? It's it says it's registering. Hmm. Mike says there's audio. That's weird. Well, anyway, you guys can look it up too. I'm sure you guys are somewhat computer Ricky savvy. Ricky the right? <laughs> It's uh, Terminator 3 Sergeant Candy scene. Browser. Yeah. Uh, just a moment. Oh yeah, Jason Momoa is like such a sweetheart to Amelia Clark. You wanna you wanna actually tell him about the the sock? What is it actually called? A modesty sock? Uh huh. Yeah. Um so in the industry it's called a cock sock. Um but basically what it is is it's like a bag to hold the male genitalia and kind of keep it out of the way. Yeah, that's basically what the whole, like, Cal Drogo mating was, was basically just rape. Yeah. <clears throat> um, but, yeah, so it's basically, like, a, a, a nice little sock that they use to tuck away hmm. the cock and balls. There's not much to tell about it. It's literally a modesty sock. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Jason Momoa got a robe during the filming with Amelia Clark for Game of Thrones. He felt bad for her, especially after he raped her on TV. Yeah, the thing was is that to also, kind of like with Halle Berry, uh, to break the tension, he showed up with a modesty sock that was giant pink and fuzzy. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's and where to break, wanted to go with it. Yeah. yeah, and to break the tension on the set, he kind of started whooping like a wild man and then jumped on the bed with this thing flopping around to t to try to break the tension to try to make everybody laugh and that's yeah. kind of what that's kind of that kind of started way back with the holly berry uh password swordfish thing is that you're doing this to make your your, your co-star more comfortable and to break the tension of a scene because honestly I, I like like I, I i've talked about it before on, on this show i have actually set up sex scenes uh for small for small films and short films and it is awkward like there there is no way to put this like you you got you got blankets on you you know you got you're on top of somebody else you got lights everywhere you got eight to nine people just and a camera there watching yeah and, <laughs> and the thing is is that you're 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 on a pause right it, it's like like okay we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna film the the going to the going to is when they get to the bedroom to the to the bed Okay, cool. Pause. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the camera, we're going to move it over here, we're going to get this different angle of the going to. Okay, cool. So now while they're on the bed, literally paused above each other, playing, playing freeze tag, <laughs> right? you move the camera. Just planking. Yeah, you move the camera. <laughs> Action. Okay, you get a few more seconds of footage. Pause. Move the camera. 
action a few more seconds and then you then usually a lot of films skip the the disrobing part and go right to the uh awkward dry humping mm -hmm. that's that's a lot of work that goes into that too because you have your actress she has to go she has to get uh changed she has to put on her 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 you know her underwear and stuff like that or whatever she's whatever she feels comfortable wearing in the scene we used to use bicycle shorts we used to use uh, uh bicycle shorts so that our the act because it was a, it was a short film so you know there wasn't going to be you know what i mean like below the belt footage mm -hmm. just her boobs were going to be out so what we did was we did actually give her a robe and it was a short robe so we set all this up, and again, the guy is going to have his ass in the air, so we gave him bicycle shorts, too. Like, we, we were too small to have a, a modesty sock, which actually cost a lot of money. <laughs> so I know, we, I was looking into the little rabbit fur things for the microphones. Dead Even cats? a small one is like 60 bucks. Yeah, dead cats, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, so when, when we had all of this, and it's just, it's just really awkward. So when you're when you go as a director or as a producer or as the camera guy or the scene guy and you tell your actress, I'm I'm gonna need you to pull the boobies out, hand hand over the robe. It's awkward. It's really really awkward. And so you do everything you can on set to make them feel comfortable, to to you know what I mean. Make sure that there's nobody that does anything weird or nobody that says anything. So it, it is an awkward situation. No cell phones. No, like, well, cell phones weren't really a big thing right. back then. It was more like but no now, extra footage. The weirdness of like the sex scene and stuff, right? And talking actor comfortability and things. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you remember the movie Devil's Rejects. I know you're not a huge yeah. Rob Zombie movie fan. No, no, no. Um, I remember it well. What's up with the one sex scene with Sid Haig and E.G. Daly, right? Mm -hmm. Because, I mean, E.G. Daly is... Ugh. Anyway, that's that's a side tangent. Um, they they go to the one angle where it's like at the foot of the bed, and you can legit see Sid Hag's balls. Like, are they just both really comfortable with her ball with his balls being up against her crotch like that? Like, yeah, actually, they were. <laughs> not not joking. Uh, according to several behind the scenes reports, uh, they they went at it. Oh, okay. So, well, uh, good for him, and that was after filming, but uh, yeah, uh, so uh, they cut legit all right, you guys sex. leave, we got some stuff to take care of. <laughs> no, that's the weird thing, though, right? Like, toward the end oh, of the hold scene, on. Oh. Why, why did I lose you? I don't know. Why did why, you lose what is happening here? Hold on a sec. <sighs> Audio, hold on a moment. Why is that selected? All right, hold on. Holding. That's why. All right, I fixed it. I fixed it. I fixed it. Yeah, but the th the the thing that really messes with my head is toward the end of the scene, right before she shoots him in the face. All I hear is Tommy Pickles. <laughs> Cuz she kind of does the scratchy voice and I'm just like all I hear is Tommy Pickles right before she shoots him in the face. Yeah. <laughs> uh has, there has been there has been real sex in movies. There has like a, like quite a, quite a few times. More than a couple of times, yes. <laughs> I'm sure there's a Watch Mojo video that documents at least 10 of them. Sid wasn't acting. They were acting on camera. They actually fucked when they stopped rolling. So that that isn't that is an actual thing that happened. And <laughs> Uh, it, it was it was quite weird. It was quite weird. Uh, I mean, it's Sid Haig, like. Well, yeah, it was Sid Haig, <laughs> you know. Yeah. So now, hold on. Now let's, because I, I I found out what was wrong when I had to update a couple of things. Apparently, it all went sideways. Huh. That usually happens on updates. Yeah. So. CRS I can hear it now. Now you got now you got audio so. Give me a sec here, because I really, I really want to hammer this home. So, just everybody get the full experience. Yeah. Using designs generated by Skynet, we need no longer risk the well-being of our men and women in uniform. Robots will take their place on the front lines. Hi, I'm Chief Master Sergeant William Candy. 
I was honored to be selected by CRS in the ongoing effort to save American lives. I don't know about that accent. We can fix it. <laughs> it so, yeah, there you go. <laughs> to you save go. American lives. <laughs> oh, it keeps going to you. It's now yeah. in our power to make war safe. And that is truly priceless. Oh my God, it's so weird. It sounds like somebody doing a Samuel L. Jackson imitation. Like, right, though? Like, badly. <laughs> Bad, yeah. Uh, but, you know, it, it's... um. So yeah, like 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 uh, the the comfortability of a, of an actor and the comfortability of an actor's on 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 set and everything else like that is is quite paramount. And yes, there has been real sex uh, on on several sets. In fact, I believe Eyes Wide Shut there is a twenty there's like twenty seven minutes missing from um the middle part where he walks into the party because. Uh, they they were just filming while people were fucking and nobody cared. Uh, yeah. Then you have movies like Caligula, like that was straight up. That was that was just straight up. It was it was triple X. I want to watch movies <laughs> with bleach. Watching it here, <laughs> like that, you know what I mean? Yeah, now you get why we're so weirded out by it. <laughs> it's, like, it's weird. Uh, I'll never forget that deleted scene. I really wish they would have kept it like as a commercial or something. Like, mm. Mm. <laughs> I hate because, it. like I said, I worked at Blockbuster at the time, so I, I bought DVDs like it was nothing. Ugh, I hate it. I hate it. I that guess. whole two hundred dollars a week I made as a part time teenager just went right back to the store. You know what I mean? But uh, I don't know. To to, to start wrapping this this show up. Uh, can uh, voice acting I, I, is something I love, I love doing, and I and I and I also believe that um, the voice can absolutely make the character, because mm -hmm. I I play Juice uh, Robert Juice Meadows in Dark Charm Presents. Robert Juice Meadows is a gigantic man. He's six foot four, six foot five. Uh, he's all muscle, but he's gay, and his lover Leaf is much shorter than him uh below six feet tall and uh doesn't sound like an effeminate stereotype and we worked <laughs> Are you... no he's not the reason i am <laughs> uh <laughs> uh no i actually am part of the reason that blockbuster failed because they tried to do the the two home netflix thing Mm -hmm. And I signed up for an account, and like I, I, it lasted two months with me, and it was the free two months. And I would and had had it kept going well, I would have liked it. But they were trying to compete with uh, GameFly at the time. Remember GameFly? Yep. And uh, I was like, okay, cool. You know, they're trying to compete with GameFly at the time for five ninety nine. But holy shit, the the amount of work it took just to select one game. Yeah. And like Gamefly got to you in like 48 hours. Yeah. With Blockbuster, it took seven to 10 days after you rented it. I remember seeing Blockbuster's like last stand too when they had the uh, the Blockbuster version of Redbox. Yeah. <laughs> it was like their last attempt at trying to stay relevant. Yeah. It was pretty bad. So, uh, but Juice, Robert Juice Meadows, the character I play. Uh, as a gay man, as a gangster, as a monster that he is, is not stereotypically voiced. He is voiced by me for a reason. And he has a certain cadence and he has a certain tone. And he's very bipolar in a lot of ways and very flip-floppy in, in his moods. One moment he's happy, one moment he's violent. And mm -hmm. to be able to do that in a voice acting setting for the purpose of making this what would usually be portrayed as a, as a very flamboyant character. I think we can both agree. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, I, for I, sure. I, there would be a lisp and there'd be an effeminate tone to him. Yeah, like in the one episode, uh, I think it was Fascination Street. That hasn't where come out I've yet. Bought, right. It hasn't come out yet. But they'll find it. But they'll yeah, find it. I. I voiced literally the characters were named Flaming Homosexual 1 and Flaming Homosexual 2. And so 
where where Juice Wood had uh um hmm? Wait. Oh, that was the Outer Worlds. Yeah. It's available on everything really. PC. Yeah, it's really uh, good. PlayStation Xbox. PlayStation I, 3 and 4? Oh no, 4, 4 and 5. I don't know if it's on Nintendo, but it probably is. I don't know. I, I can find out. I, I mean, the Switch has friggin' Resident Evil, so why not? But no, okay, going back to voice acting while Dead Man's watching birds fly over his room. I hate um, One of my favorite characters that Dead Man does. Hey. Uh, one of my favorite characters oh, yeah, that Dead Man does, talking about the voice definitely helps to make the character. Yeah. Uh, especially in audio dramas. That's the only reference you have. Yeah. Is the voice of El Diablo. <laughs> <laughs> because as soon as I heard El Diablo speak, Hola, Nachos del Grande, I pictured some like five foot one, <laughs> five foot two, barrel chested, chubby Guatemalan guy wearing a stone cold Steve Austin vest, just harassing people at the laundry room. Like I could see it in my mind. So definitely I would have to agree then that the voice does make the character. Um, with the exception of characters that have enough presence that they don't need to speak, such as Master Chief from the first Halo game. And even he has speaking lines. Eventually. He has a speaking line at the very end of the game, which to me, I felt ruined it. But that's from a gamer perspective where we were supposed to be Master Chief. And I'm like, well, my voice doesn't sound like that. I'm fucking 13 years old. Like, <laughs> my voice is like that. I don't know. The voice that I have now is the voice that I had got between sixth and seventh grade, though. So I, I did sound like that, but I didn't have that rattly Master Chief sound to it. I don't even know. I don't even remember what Master Chief sounds like. It's been so yeah. fucking long. Kurt Russell in Universal Soldier. Also a very strong, low, very not a lot of lines. Uh, or Nick Cage in Willy's Wonderland. No lines. Uh <laughs> Still Kurt a great Russell, character, though. <laughs> Kurt Russell in Universal Soldier was one of the better, uh, one of the better ways that whole thing could have been done. Considering everybody else's speech was and speech patterns was very over the top. But here you go, Mike. I found you, found it for you. The there you go. Worlds. PC, Xbox One, PS4, Nintendo Switch. And, and if you is, have Xbox, it is on Game Pass. Yeah, and this is really, really good. <laughs> It uh, really was a good game. I actually did all of the missions in it, with the exception of the bounties. Um, that was a really good game. The problem I have with it is after you beat it, there's no replayability. Like, it doesn't give you an after the end save game. Yeah. Like, it's just over. <laughs> I think Kurt had more than one sentence then. Didn't he? I don't know. Darth Maul. Darth Maul had what? Eight words? <laughs> in Phantom Menace? Yes, my master. Yeah. yeah. And then... Ryan's going to um, go pee on the neighbor's dog. Yeah, he does that. Uh, original <laughs> uh, original Boba Fett. Five lines had, in the trilogy. Like, yeah, five lines in a whole trilogy. We're not including the, the cartoon series. Yeah. You know? You know, like... I, I guess every character has to have a little bit more. of a voice. Yeah, that's what I mean. It, there, there has to be a voice. It has to do it. Because remember, what did, what did Darth Vader's original voice sound like? The uh, guy in the suit? British, yeah, British bodybuilder guy. Like, Who can I talk like this? Yeah. <laughs> you will take me to your rebel base, and you will do it now. Yeah, just that, that's, that's what it was. You know what I mean? Instead of, you are, you are a traitor to the Alliance. You know, it's like, yeah, and then just to fuck with the actors because he wasn't going to get his lines on tape, he just started saying gibberish yeah. halfway through his performance, and they fucking fired him for it. And then he's he, like, because they couldn't get a replacement, he was like, okay, I'll stop doing it. They brought him back, but yeah, he got fucking fired <laughs> for literally just going and just like miming what he was trying to say. I mean, yeah. I mean, at that point, really, you know. I like, find your lack of faith disturbing. I have altered the deal. Pray that I do not alter it any further. Um, I like the little fun fact since we're on the Star Wars thing about Vader. 
is yeah. when they were filming, the line was, no, I killed your father. No, it was no, Obi-Wan no. killed your father. Obi-Wan killed your father. That's it. And, uh, like, I thought that was really cool. The, James Earl Jones didn't even know that Vader was Luke's father until it was time to record. Like, no, and even then he didn't know because it was he he was he recorded three different lines for it. Yeah. He recorded Obi Wan killed your father. No, I am your father. And then he uh, and then he uh, recorded another line. I forgot what it was. Uh, oh, it was uh, the Emperor is your father. So like he recorded three lines. So not even he knew. Yeah. So like, he, they, they were, were like, like they were like Tom Holland proofing Star Wars. In the <laughs> like, <laughs> well, I mean, like when you when you look at it, everybody on the everybody that made that movie said if you ever if you don't if you don't want to keep a secret, go tell Carrie Fisher. Mm-hmm. And Carrie Fisher was there for a lot of production because she was really curious. So they had to they had to keep stuff out of Carrie Fisher's hands. <laughs> uh, she was a little pistol man. <laughs> Luke kissed his sister. The whole family should have been in Springer, probably, probably. But roll tide. That, <laughs> roll tide. <laughs> that is going to do it for our Friday show. Uh, we hope you learned something. Uh, if not, that's cool. We hope you yeah, just you enjoyed hanging out. out. Yeah. yeah. We, uh, we, thank you, Pond Far, for joining us. Thank you, Susan. Thank you, Mike Fucking Smith. And uh, thank you, Ashley for dropping by thank you guys so very very much we really do appreciate it we will be back sunday we are covering the johnny depp verdict yeah we're gonna be talking about it oh my god yes and uh i wonder we're gonna gonna be talking about a lot of stuff on sunday alexa what amber heard's net worth is what oh no computer what is amber heard's net worth Damn, that was quick. <laughs> Minus six million U.S. dollars. <laughs> Pon far we know John won, but we are going to be discussing why he won specifically. Now, we're not lawyers, but I have studied law. DJ has studied law, and uh, Grave Robber has slept with three lawyers. Mm. They weren't all female. I'll be dreaming of you too, Mike fucking Smith, but we are out of here. Thank you guys so very, very much for being here. Uh, tune in, uh, <laughs> better lawyer, <laughs> uh, tune in Sunday. We're going to yeah. talk about it guys. Letters. Sure.